Welcome to Learning Mool. We are focusing on multiplication for kids and we're going to look at a method called the grid method today. Now the grid method is a really good step, um, a prelude step to that formal written short multiplication. The beauty with the grid method is that it really lays out all the different steps and the children can clearly see what they're doing. They can understand the place value and it becomes a really good visual method. I love it because it's actually really good for all levels within the class and it allows children to see those steps involved before they move to that more compact and um, short multiplication column method. So I would always lay out the steps to the children. I would leave these on my board so that they do know that these are the steps. And it's actually a really good little checklist that they can go back out through to make sure that they have done all the steps. And it's a good talking point as well because you're actually talking through the strategy rather than just saying this is how you do it, off you go. So the first um, thing I would say is I, I would start using this um, for a two digit number multiplied by a single digit. You can use it for a two digit number multiplied by a two digit number but it gets a little bit more technical so I wouldn't jump in just too quickly. I would start with the lower numbers as well, maybe 17, 18, 19 and then move to the bigger numbers, but we're going to explore 63 times five, and I'm just going to talk you through the different steps, just as I would with the children, to show um, what exactly I'm talking about and to help um, you understand the process, because I know I never came across this method when I was in school, so it was entirely new to me um, when I became a teacher. So, you know, it is a very um, new method to parents, possibly, um, maybe not to the children, but to the parents. So it's good to be able to understand what children are exploring in school so that you can stick to those same methods um, and it, avo it avoids confusion. <clears throat> so the first step would be, step number one is to grow, draw the grid. Now at the beginning of this journey, I would always draw the grid for the children because you don't want them worrying about drawing the grid and how many spaces they need. That will come as they get more familiar with the method and more confident. The second step is to partition. Children at this stage in maths should know what partition means, but if they don't, it's very, very simple. It's basically partitioning that number into its tens number and its units number. And I would reiterate the importance of its tens number and its units number, the actual number that the tens represents rather than just how many tens. So I would actually physically get them to work that out on the page so that you can see and so that they can see that they have done this correctly. So I would always lay it out like this. So I would say 63 is three units. And you can just put a U for units if you want, or three ones. And the number here is 60. It's six tens. It's really, really important that they get this 60. As I say, it's the tens number. It's the number that the tens represent rather than just how many tens. I also always put an addition sign in so that they can see 60 plus 3 is the same as 63. That if they do put 6 there, when they go to double check, they can say 6 plus 3 is 9. Oh, there's something wrong there. So that if they lay it out like this, it's very visual and they can see clearly. So that would be to partition first into 60 and 3. And you would put then those numbers into your grid. So that's step 1 and step 2 done. And you've got your multiplication here sign. So what are you multiplying by? you're multiplying by five, and that's basically your grid set up on there. So as you can see, the grid is entirely set up. Uh, you've drawn the grid, you've partitioned the number into your 60 and your three, and you've filled your grid. So now you're ready to multiply. This is really, really important, uh, a really important step here where you will be encouraging your children to use their known facts. It's very important that the children do know their times tables when they're entering into this method. And I would definitely say if they don't, to give them a multiplication grid, because the purpose of this is teaching them the method. It's not teaching them the times tables. And you don't want to detract from that. Children that possibly um, are not as confident with their times tables will get bogged down with the times tables rather than actually the method. So just give them that multiplication grid until they're more comfortable with those times tables. So this is where I would say focusing on known facts. Nobody knows their 60 times tables. We don't learn our 60 times tables and that's the discussion I would have with the children. But we do know our six times tables and we do know our five times tables. So using those known facts, which is a really good strategy within this method. So five times six is what I would tell them to look at. Now they know that five times six is 30, but they must remember that this is not 
six, it's 60. So they have to get that extra zero in because it's not six. So you will start with um, your five times six or five times 60. We knew that five times six is 30. So five times 60 must be 300. And this would be my big point where I would say to the children, this is your big double checking point. I would even maybe even get them to color that in, ring it, put a star at it, something so that they know they must, must double check because this will be the most common mistake that children will make. So you put your 300 in there. And you can color code this if you want. If you want the children to actually write the answers um, in a different color to begin with, it's another good way of actually showing exactly what they're doing. Um, I've done that before with children that are maybe struggling. And then they're multiplying their five times their three. So they're five times their 60, they're five times their three, which is 15. So now they've got all their answers. And this is the point where, as I say, you might want to color code it. You might want to um, show that these are the answers and that's perfectly fine, especially in these beginning stages. So what I would say to the children, right, so now you've done your grid, you've partitioned, you've multiplied, now we're going to add. And this is where I would maybe get them to highlight what are you going to add. So here are your two answers. Now mentally, children should be able to do that mentally, but if they do need to write a little column addition, that's equally fine. They can do that on the side and add it up if they want to. Most children won't need to for this sort of calculation, but maybe as it gets a bit trickier, they will. Add it up and they get their 315. And that's their answer, basically. Then you go back to double check and you're checking all of this. This is where your biggest double checking point should be, is that multiple of 10 and making sure that you have multiplied a multiple of 10 rather than just the single digit. So going through it all and double checking it. Now I'm going to just do one more, um, going through the steps step by step so that you can just clearly see um, how this can be done. It's such a clear method and once children grasp it, it's one that's almost foolproof apart from that multiple that they need to really need to focus on. So let's do, um, let's see, 72 times 6. Okay, so I'm just going to talk through this, draw the grid. Now you might want to do this in books with rulers and everything, but um, I'm just going to do it quickly. And um, actually when children are working out, um, I would prefer that they were more focused on actually the working out rather than drawing the grid all beautifully. Okay, so put my multiplication sign in here just to remind myself that I'm multiplying. Partition, so I've got my 72. I'm going to partition into two units. And I'm going to partition into 70. 70 plus two, which is my seven tens down here, if I want to write that down. I'm going to put that into my grid, so my 70 and my 2. Just rub that out. I'm now going to put my 6 in to show that that's what I'm multiplying by. I'm going to do 6 times 70. I don't know my 70 times tables, but I do know what 6 times 7 is. It's 42. I need to remember, put my star up there, that I'm not multiplying by 7. I'm actually multiplying by 70, so I know it's 420. I'm going to do my 6 times 2, which I know is 12. And if I don't know that, I've got my multiplication grid that I can look through and find my answer. I'm now going to move to my adding step. And I'm going to add 420 plus 12. I might want to do a column addition just to make sure that I'm totally correct. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And 4 plus zero is four. My answer is 432 and I want to go back and I want to double check and make sure that I have done all of the steps. So it is as simple as that and it is a really clear cut method for your children to see. What the beauty of it is, is when they do go back to double check, it's so visual they can see, oh, well I've written 48 in there by accident and six times seven isn't 48. And you can also see where they've made the mistake. So you can see, is it a problem with just times tables? Is it a problem with their method? You can actually clearly see and sort that out very, very quickly because it is so visual. But it is a really good method for that step before moving on to that formal column multiplication.